Hi guys, hope everybody's doing well. May have to do some, a little bit of camera adjustment here. So bear with me while I do that. Um, hold on just a second. Bear with me, we're gonna let people have a chance to join in. I think that's a little bit better. So I'm so happy you've taken the time to join me. And um, hi, everybody. And what we're going to hone in on today is um, setting some intentions for the New Year's. But I would also like to introduce the idea of um, validations. And I know so many people can get bogged down with uh, resolutions for the new year. And I would like to invite you to look into validations um, more than resolutions. Trying to shed a little more light on my face. I think that's a little bit better. Just bear with me. We got a couple more minutes anyway here. Hold on. So what I like about the validation idea rather than resolutions is people feel really guilty when they break resolutions. So if you want to make a list of at least 10 to 20 things that validate the little and the big things you survived last year, um, not the coming year, and kind of see where that takes you. So um, that might be something you do for New Year's. And then I was talking about how years ago I went to see a psychic and recently I was talking about this with a friend and she told me that New Year's and your birthday are perfect times um, when there's a portal in the sky. So when you are um, wanting something to happen and you want to manifest something, she had me write down a list of a, I, again, I don't think she gave me a number. I think I wrote down 20 to 30 things. Um, as far as health, well-being, finances, all that stuff. And then after I wrote down the wish, so to speak, she would have me write, so be it. So be it. I, I wish for good health in 2022. So be it. I wish for healing in 2022. So be it. I wish for answers um, to, you know, medical questions, whatever you want to write down. <clears throat> and then at night, before you go to bed, on either one of those days, um, you go out and you want to make sure you're careful here. Don't do this in your own home um, unless you have a fireplace, but you want to burn that list. And of course, if you have a high fire danger, uh, like we do in Colorado right now, you want to be very, very careful. But if you have a fire pit or again, a contained environment, um, take that list and then burn it to send it off to the heavens. So just some thoughts and ideas about this. Um, New Year's that we're transitioning into. And today what we're gonna do is some stretching and in our chair, I'm actually sitting in a chair and then I'll take it onto the floor. I wanna challenge you all to look in to the plank pose. Um, really good for pelvic floor strengthening and um, just strengthening the core and the abdominal muscles. So I'll be moving my computer around today a little bit to try to get the best vantage point. If you can hold the core um, plank position pose for even 10 seconds, 15 seconds, five seconds, and I'll show you some modifications that you can do with it. Um, you'll notice the strengthening in, in, again, in your abdominal wall and your pelvic floor, which a lot of us struggle with weak pel pelvic floors um, with 
with MCAS or mastocytosis, the mast cell population. So let's um, <clears throat> go ahead and we'll get started. And then we're gonna go into a, a chakra cleanse. Um, so we've got about, I don't know, a half an hour or so of some exercises to do here. Let's bring our shoulders up to our ears and back down. We're gonna do this about 10 times. Bring your shoulders up and back down. Uh, how many of you carry your tension in your shoulders? I know I do. I, I, I'm like this a lot of the time when I have to remind myself down with my shoulders and up. Now, you wanna be seated either on the floor, on a couch, in a chair, but make sure your back is straight and you're comfortable here for the most part. People ask me all the time what props they need for yoga. You can use a yoga mat, but you know, you can also do yoga on your floor. You just wanna make sure that you have a soft, even a blanket, but you don't wanna do yoga on a wood floor, for example, or a tile floor with socks on because you could slide and hurt yourself. Up and down with the shoulders. Good, good, good. I wouldn't be surprised if one of my cats makes an appearance here. Good. Breathe deep. Up and down. If you lose count, don't worry about it. Just do it a couple more times. Good. Good. And I want you to reach up. I'm going to move the computer back a little bit so you can see up, reaching a little bit again across the body. And on the other side, and just stretching the sides of the body and the arms up, reaching up. Again, leave a little space between your shoulder. And your ear don't you don't have to be flush and i'm just leaning a little bit to each side as i reach up up and i do i'm so thrilled you all have joined me um for this time in class whether you're here live or whether you're going to be watching the recording later good, good good and then i want you to reach up and over and just hold it Make sure again, don't hold the breath. You can breathe in through the nose, out through the nose, or in through the nose, out through the mouth. And then reach the other side and hold it. Reach, reach, reach. You can act like you're pulling your rope. And then go ahead and bring your head back to center. Your crown is straight up towards the ceiling. Point your right arm or your left. We'll do both. Elbow up to the ceiling. I'm just letting my fingertips dangle behind my back. And just breathe. Nice deep breath. You don't want to breathe too fast. You don't want to hyperventilate. Again, breathing in and out. Now swing that same arm around in front of your neck. And you can just do a gentle pull. And then you can flex your fingers up to the ceiling and then bend your hand down. If you want to, you'll feel this through your arm, all the way up into your shoulder even. But you can always just keep your hand level too with your wrist, up, otherwise up and down. And just, you're just in a nice seated, relaxed position. And now same thing with the other side, just bring that arm up and elbow up to the sky. Now, I, you don't have to pull. That doesn't necessarily, you can if you want, but otherwise gravity will do the work and you can just let that arm hang. You can just breathe. Good, and then just take that arm and swing it in front of your neck and a nice gentle pull. I try to stretch every day. Um, I've noticed a lot of us will stiffen up. I know Sarah had mentioned that if she doesn't do something every day, she ends up feeling more stiff at the end of the day. Almost, I've told practitioners forever, I almost present like fibromyalgia at times, or us mast cell people do. Anytime you want to take a drink of water. Now, as I mentioned, you don't necessarily need a mat. I have an eco-friendly mat here. 
that came without too much of a smell because I can react to anything, especially rubber-based products. Um, so I'm gonna take us down onto the floor and we are going to do some front forward bends, downward dog, walking out into plank. Now plank, the plank pose is almost like it sounds like, it's like a board. You wanna, so I start out in downward dog, I'm just gonna shave my hands. I walk my body out, my hands out, and I get to the point where I'm a bit of an angle, but I'm straight, if I can hold my body straight up on my palms and my toes are curled under supporting me. If I need to drop down, I can't really do it with this, my hand here, but if I need to drop down to my knees or my elbows, that's just fine. There's always ways to modify this stuff. Okay, excuse me while I move a couple of things. Take a drink of water if you want to. Bear with me. While I get my camera angle, you can go ahead and just stand up straight in mountain pose. Again, mountain pose is standing up. Excuse me, watch out, watch out kitties. But not locking your knees, okay? So what I want you to do, I'm gonna move my computer back a little further. I hope you can hear me. I always say it's more important to see my body than my head. <laughs> and let me get these some lighting right here. So what I want you to do is stand up. Okay. Now, I'm not locking my knees. Locked knees look like this. And I'm hypermobile, so I have to be careful, leave a little bend in my knees. Okay. I've got my toes spread. And activate your toes. Grab onto the to the mat, breathe deep. And then I want you to reach up, 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 up to the ceiling. Good job. And then before we go into any sort of a downward dog, you're just gonna do a front forward bend and hang. As I like to say, rag doll. Just go into a bit of a rag doll. Thanks for bearing with me here. Moving around. So you're just hanging down, hanging down. You can grab your elbows if you want to. And you can even sway side to side. Now, if at any time you get dizzy doing these inversions, come back up to center. That's where we're gonna go now. So standing up straight. Good job, do a couple shoulder rolls back. And now we're gonna go into downward dog and I'm gonna show it to you from two angles, okay? So if, when we're gonna do it twice. So if you wanna initially watch, that is just fine, okay? So you're gonna again reach, reach, reach up to the sky. Fold down. Now, if you were just to need to stay, if you wanted to stay in a front fold and not go into downward dog, that's fine. But if you can manage, walk those hands out. And I've got my hands are flat about shoulder width apart. My feet are a little bit more than hip width apart. And you're an upside down V basically. And then just push down on the left and the right heel and the left and the right. And if you were to see it from this angle, again, upside down V, left right and then you're going to want to walk your hands out if you're still with me here okay and get yourself into an angled position angled position try to get your bottom down hold that now if you needed to you could come down on your knees or come down on the floor <clears throat> then I'll do it from this way. So you can come down onto your elbows or on your knees. Okay, we're gonna do that again. I'm just, not, again, introducing you to this plank pose. Do whatever you're comfortable doing. So come back onto all fours. 
You'll see I'm on all fours. And then walk your, curl your toes under, go back into your downward dog, and then walk your hands back as your feet flatten. Slowly curl up. As they say, one vertebrae at a time. Nice. Now you may have felt again a little blood flow to the brain, the head. Blood flow to the brain is good for you. Again, it gets blood to the brain and also stimulates um, a part of our body that we really just don't pay enough attention to sometimes. So if you think about, I, uh, you know, I think it energizes the brain and helps us think, think clearly. All right, you ready? We're gonna do that one more time. And I'm gonna to try to get you in a better position, me in a better position. Okay, so we're just gonna start with a front forward bend. We're gonna walk our hands out until you're in upside down while your head is suspended in a downward facing dog. Then we're gonna walk our hands out. And I'm gonna, that was a little bit close last time. So I couldn't straighten out the way I wanted to. So I'm moving my couch a little bit. Okay, so and then we'll go right into our chakra cleanse. So reach up, 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 up. Bend down. You don't need to palm the floor at this point if you just land on your knees or your calves or your ankles. My feet are about hip-width apart. I've got my toes spread. My knees are bent. Hands on the ground. And then walk yourself out. Get upside down V. My hands are about shoulder-width apart. Spread those fingers. You should feel a nice stretch in your calves. So push down on the left, push down on the right, heel. And then I'm gonna keep my walk going until I'm not, again, a plank. My body's at maybe a 20, 30 degree angle. My hands are pretty much under my shoulders. Feet are straight, toes are curled under. See how long you can hold that. Don't forget to breathe. And then down on those knees. If you want to, you could even go down to the knees much sooner. And then down onto your elbows, even if you want. And just breathe. Nice. So again, just challenge yourself to a plank every day. You can increase the second you do it. Now sit back on your heels. You can take those toes and Make your feet flat so your toes aren't curled under anymore. And just go back into child's pose, which is just a resting pose. You can stack your fist and lay your head on your fist or lay your head on the mat or the floor. And while I rearrange, you all stay in child's pose. You can spread your legs when you're in child's pose to accommodate your belly. Your feet don't have to be flush, by the way. I hope that makes sense. You can spread your knees a little bit and accommodate that belly. Good, good, good. And it's important, you know, when I first started getting back into exercise, after I was I'm most sick with um, mastocytosis, I had to, I would overheat really easily. So I would have to have a window open, and a cloth around my neck, and a fan going, um, just to make sure that I stay modulated as far as heat. So you all may have to do something like that too. And just make sure, um, I found that if I worked out at home, I had a little bit more control um, over my environment, obviously. And I wanted to see if I could show you. Um, there's some different videos I do on YouTube and Netflix. And uh, I wanted you to see it. I'll just go ahead and email it to you. Some of the video workouts I do um, that keep me going. And, you know, Netflix even now has mind space where you can do some meditations with them. So um, there's just a lot of places now 
you can work out. And one lady, I'm looking at her now, her name's, she's on Amazon Prime and her name is Carrie. Oh, I'm gonna have to type it to you. But she does a yoga series called Yoga for the Not So Young. And even if you're young, this is a good modification for mastocytosis people and MCAS people, mast cell people. So let's go ahead and take it. I'm gonna sit cross-legged in my chair. You can be on the ground, you can be in a chair, you can be on a couch. And we're gonna go through a little bit of a chakra cleanse. Now again, make sure you're not breathing too heavily. If you get dizzy, just come back to center, okay? So just sitting cross-legged, that's all you're doing right now. Hands up to the shoulders, just breathe, just breathe. Now reach the hands up and down, up and down. Now, if you can incorporate it, as you reach up, try to bring your knees up and then bring your body down. Like there's strings attached to your hands and your knees. And like I said, I'll type the lady's name who I use and some of my resources that I use for exercise. I mentioned it in another class, I believe, but and up and down one more time. I haven't seen too many MCAS people or master people get better without some sort of exercise and just a gentle exercise program. Doesn't have to be intense. Okay, just breathe now. Wherever you're at, chair, couch, bed, I want you to almost like you're doing cat cow in a chair. Round your back, it's spinal wave, really. And you wanna reach forward with your chin, round your back, bring your belly button back in. Round your back. Then we have seven, seven chakra points. You might know about chi and about chakras, but we have meridians in our body and if they're not, flowing well, if we don't, don't, don't pay attention to our mitochondria and our vagus nerve, they get blocked. Yes, round the back. And again, spinal wave. So I'm bending forward, bringing my belly button in and then sitting back up. Again, keep your breath going. If you need to move your feet at any time, do that. In other words, if you need to switch sides or anything, come back to center, which foot's in front of the other. Just breathe. You can close your eyes for a moment. <sighs> and then just turn your head over your left shoulder, slowly, and then the right. And then we're gonna move into the third chakra. Left shoulder. Now come back to, and then the right, so we're even. <laughs> Come back to center, and I just want you to move almost like a hula hoop action. I want you to move your spine to one side and then rotate to the other. It's a little bit of an oval, basically, not a full circle. There you go. And then switch, switch directions. Go back to the other side. Mm-hmm. You're going one side again to the other. Breathe deep, breathe deep. And then <clears throat> you can come back to center. Doesn't that feel nice? Do it one more time on each side. Yeah, there you go, rotate, and then back to the other side. So if I hold, hold my arms up, you can kind of see my rotation more because wearing black, I kind of become one black blob. And then back to center. And now just breathe, just breathe. Hmm. And if you want to, again, one more time, just turn the head to the left. And then to the right. And then back to center. Now, once again, take your arms up to your shoulders. Okay, nice relaxed breath. You can breathe again in through your nose, out through your nose, or in through your nose, out through your mouth. And now I just want you to take your arms in and out. And now position yourself so you can twist from one side to the other while the arms are up. Breathe deep. And 
And I'm just twisting again from about my belly button up. Arms are up, touching my shoulders. Breathe deep. And twist just to, again, your limitation. You don't have to be, again, and especially watch if you have EDS, if you're hypermobile, just twist as far as you're comfortable. Even keeping those arms up is a little bit of a workout. And if you forget where you are again, just keep going. Do a couple more to each side. Good, and then just hold it to one side, wherever you're landing right now, hold it. And then inhale, go to the other side. Then come back to center and bring your hands down. Breathe deep. Close your eyes. Put your hand on your belly and take that breath in. See if you're, again, you don't want to be contracting your belly. You want to be expanding when you breathe in. And now take your hands once again, interlace your fingertips and put your hands underneath your chin. Now I want you to bend the arms up and bring them down. Take the elbows up, and then as you bring the elbows down, look up to the sky. Try to touch your elbows, your arms, your forearms. Bring your arms up and bring them down. Again, arms go up. And you, I, I'm stiff in my shoulders. I'm hypermobile in some areas and stiff other places. Only go up as far as you can. You may be able to go up much further. Good. And arms back down. A couple more times. Been supporting my chin, my hands. Arms back down. Arms up. And down. One more time. Arms up. And as you bring the hands down, look up to the sky. It's good to move the eyes in different directions as well. And then whenever you're ready, bring your hands back to center. <sighs> Close your eyes and just breathe. Just breathe. Hands to the side, on your knees. Again, just breathe. And now I want you to once again, turn to the left, turn to the right, nice and slow. Now we're gonna work on the last chakra. Let's go ahead and reach out to the sky, reaching out, hands open. And then bring the hands back over the eyes. Reach out. Hands back over the eyes. Now, as you take the hands out, reach, reach, reach. And as you scoop them back in, see if you see a color as you cover your hands, your eyes with your hands. And then back out. Nice, extend and a couple more times. So we worked from our root chakra up to our solar plexus, which is again, our pelvic region. Nice and reach out. Then of course we moved into the belly and up to the heart region. You can stop and just relax your hands. The heart chakra. Breathe deep. Moved into the throat chakra. And you know your intuition's powerful, so your third eye right here in the middle of your forehead. And then 
One more time. Hands in prayer pose, reach up, up, up. And then you can leave the hands actually flipped in and bring them down into prayer pose, working on the crown chakra. Up, 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 bringing the hands down. One more time. Reaching up and bringing the hands to prayer pose. And now just sit, sit and relax. Mm. And this is where I offer namaste. The light within me honors the light within you. Thanks again for coming. And we'll see you next week. Take care.